Hello. So in this video, we will be learning briefly about the basis three board and various functions, features, and also the pins about the basis three board. Okay. So let's get started. The basis three board is a complete ready to use digital circuit development platform based on the latest RTX 7 field programmable gate array, which is FPGA made by Xilinx. Okay. The basis three can host designs ranging from introductory combination circuits to complex sequential circuits like embedded processors and controllers. It includes enough switches, LEDs and other input output devices to allow a large number of designs to be completed without the need of any additional hardware and enough uncommitted FPGA input output pins to allow designs to be expanded using P mods or other custom boards and circuits. Okay. Now the features, the Arctic 7 FPGA is optimized for high performance logic and offers more capacity, higher performance and more resources than earlier designs. Arctic 7 35T features include 33,280 logic cells in 5,200 slices. 1800 kilobytes of fast block RAM, five clock management tiles, each with a phase block loop or PLL, 90 DSP slices, internal clock speed exceeding 450 MHz, on chip analog to digital converter X ADC. The basis three also offers improved collection of ports and peripherals, including 16 user switches. 16 user LEDs, 5 user push buttons, 4 digit 7 segment display, 3 PMOD ports, PMOD for XADC signals, 12 bit VGA output, USB to UART bridge, serial flash, Digilent USB JTAG port for FPGA programming and communication. So these are all the descriptions about the hardware. Now the software, so the software that we can use with the basis three board is the Vivado design suit. Okay. So now let's have a look around at the basis three board in hardware. So this on the frame that you can see is our basis three board. And this is how the front view of this basis three board is. And this is the back view of the basis three board. Okay. So this is how, like once you purchase this board or once you have this board with you, this is how it should look like. This is the front view and this is the back view. Now make sure that this, the board that you are having is basis three board and not basis two because both are completely different and there are various functionalities, difference, feature difference in both of them. Okay. So there is difference. So make sure if you are getting or buying a basis three board, uh, it is mentioned basis three here and it is from Digilent. Okay. Now let's have a look at the hardware and let's try to understand what all things are uh, mentioned on our board. So here, if, if you can see here, this is the image that I have grabbed from the Digilent website. It explains us uh, very easily what all things are mentioned here and like what are the things that are available on the board. Okay. So let's go one by one and let's look uh, at one thing at a time. So the first call out is for power good LED. So if you can see here, this area explains us that there is a power LED which will turn on when there is a proper power provided. Okay. So there is a power LED here. Then the number two call out is for PMOD connectors. So if you can see here, this is a PMOD connector. Uh, this again, two is mentioned here. This is a PMOD connector and this again is a PMOD connector. Okay. So this is again, seems like a PMOD connector. It is a PMOD connector, but the functionality is different. So if you can see here, the number three defined here is analog signal PMOD connector, right? So this is a PMOD connector, but this is for analog. It means this is uh, connected to an analog to digital signal, which is ADC. So which is why we have this as analog signal PMOD connector. Okay. And then the number four is our four digit seven segment display. Okay. 
and then we have uh, number five is slide switches. There are 16 slide switches here. If you can see, these are all the 16 slide switches. We can uh, use them for different, different purposes in our projects. And if you can see here, it is mentioned there are 16 LEDs. So if you see here for each slide switch, there is an LED. Just on top of that, there is one LED placed here. Okay, so there are 16 LEDs. And if you can see here, number six is placed here. And there are five push buttons. And this is the, these are the five push buttons, left, right, uh, center, top, and bottom. So these are the five push buttons. And there is FPGA programming done LED. If you can see here, this is the indicating the FPGA programming LED number eight. And the number nine is FPGA configuration reset button. This is our reset button at number nine. And just the number 10 is uh, placed next to it, which is uh, programming mode jumper. So you can change the programming mode configuration by using this jumper. And then the next is uh, USB host connector, which is number 11. And the number 12 is VGA connector. The number 13 is our UART or JTAG USB port. And the 14 number is our external power connector. So this is an external power connector, which uh, like, let's suppose if you want to power this board using an external power supply, uh, if you have a jumper wire and you can just, you can just connect those some, uh, jumper wires with that power supply here. And then we have the number 15 as power switch. This is our power switch. And again, number 16 is our power selector jumper. So whichever power mode you are using, either if it is uh, external supply or any other supply or uh, the USB host supply or anything. So you can just choose that from here and place the jumper accordingly, according to that power supply. So these are the main things that you can see uh, that are available on our board. Now, the most important thing apart from all these uh, features are is this our Arctic 7. Okay, so this is the main FPGA chip that will help us do all the functionalities for this basis three board. And without this, this board is nothing. So this is our main chip, which is Arctic 7. Okay. So apart from that, if you see, uh, as we discussed here, there are various uh, P mods available here and each P mod has its pin configuration. Uh, so this image shows the pin out. Uh, right now we won't discuss this in detail, but we will get back onto this uh, later on. So let's move on to the power. Okay. So all basis three power supplies can be turned on and off by a single logic power switch, which is SW16. So if you see this SW16, and uh, this is the same as this one, this is our SW16. So we can just turn this on and off and all our power supply can be controlled using this switch. So this is the schematic for the power in the basis three board. So how we can power supply the basis three board. There are two options here. We can power it either, either using the USB or providing an external power supply. Okay, so there are two modes. And according to whichever mode we are giving the power supply, we have to select this jumper. Uh, so in the basis three board, if you see here, earlier we saw the same thing. And in here, if you see, this is our USB. Using this, we can provide the power supply. And if you are using the USB, you can just make this jumper as it is right now. And if we are powering on using the external power supply, then you can just uh, place the jumper wire in this area. Okay. So let me show you how we can do that. And if you see here, this is the, uh, if you are powering from the USB, then the jumper should be placed something like this. And if you are powering on using the external power supply, then the jumper should be placed like this. And this is our power good LED. Okay. And this is where we will be providing the external power supply uh, of five volt. And if you see here, this is how you can paste the jumper wires. The left is for positive and this is for ground. It is already mentioned here, GND and EXT. Okay. So here you can uh, provide five volt plus five volt supply and minus five volt supply to here. And you should place the jumper here uh, on the external side. Okay. And once you do that, then this LED should be on. 
and again this switch also should be on then only your basis 3 board will be powered on if this is not on it means that this uh, switch is uh, in off condition okay so it is written whether the switch is in off condition or on condition uh, wherever this side is if you see here right now this is an off condition the supply must deliver 4.5 volt uh, dc to a 5.5 volt dc or it should be exactly 5 volts and at least 1 ampere of current uh, that is at least 5 watt of power. Okay. The power provided to USB devices that are connected to host connector J2 is not regulated. Therefore, it is necessary to limit the maximum voltage of an external battery pack to 5.5 volt DC. The minimum voltage of the battery pack depends on the application. If the USB host function J2 is used, at least 4.6 volt needs to be provided. In other cases, the minimum voltage required is 3.6 volt. The voltage regulator chosen for the power supply on the basis 3 is the LTC3663 for the main board power and was chosen to create the required 3.3, 1.8 and 1 volt supplies from the main 5 volt power input. The auxiliary RAM functions of the FPGA used LTC3621 chip. Uh, this will provide them the 1.8 volt power supply. Now the next thing comes is the FPGA configurations. So after power, after we power on the FPGA board or the basis three board, the Arctic 7 FPGA must be configured or programmed before it can perform any functions. To configure the FPGA, you have the option to choose one of the three ways. First, a PC can use the Digilent USB JTAG circuitry labeled PROG or program to program the FPGA anytime the power is on. Then second, a file stored in the non-volatile CDL SPI flash device can be transferred to the FPGA using SPI port. And the last is a programming file can be transferred from USB memory stick attached to the USB HID port. Okay. So there are three ways using which we can program either directly by connecting the USB connector uh, from our PC, uh, either using the SPI communication uh, from this SPI port or using the USB type A host, uh, which is the USB HID port. Okay. So the FPGA configuration data is stored in files called bit streams that have the dot bit file extension. The Vivado software from the Xilinx can create bit streams from VHDL, Verilog, or schematic based source files. Bit streams are stored in SRAM based memory cells within the FPGA. These data defines the FPGA's logic functions and circuit connections, and it remains valid until it is erased by removing board power by pressing the reset button attached to the program input or by writing a new configuration file using the JTAG port. Okay, so this is how it will look like. And here from here, you can select the programming mode. Now, if first JTAG programming is selected, a dot bit file is transferred from the PC to the FPGA using the onboard Digilent USB JTAG circuitry or an external JTAG programmer, such as Digilent JTAG HS2 attached to port 5. You can perform JTAG programming anytime after the basis 3 has been powered on regardless of what the power mode GP1 is set to. If the FPG programming is already configured, then the existing configuration is overwritten with the bitstream being transferred over JTAG. Now, if the programming mode selected is the quad SPI, then this is how the jumper should be placed. Previously, this is how the jumper was placed for selecting the JTAG USB circuitry. And right now we are uh, selecting the SPI. So we will uh, place this as like this. Okay. And when programming a non volatile flash drive, a bitstream file is transferred to the flash in a two step process. First, the FPGA is programmed with a circuit that can program flash devices. And then the data is transferred to the flash device via the FPGA circuit. After the flash device has been programmed, it is it can automatically configure the FPGA at the subsequent power on or reset event as determined by the mode jumper setting. 
and the last and the third mode is our usb host programming so if that mode is selected then you can program the fpga from a pen drive attached to the usb hid port by doing the following format the storage device that is the pen drive using a fat32 file system place a single bit configuration file in the root directory of the storage device which is our pen drive attach the pen drive to the basis 3 board set the jp1 programming mode jumper to the basis 3 to the usb and push the program button on the basis 3 make sure that the power button is on for the basis 3 the fpga will automatically be configured with the dot bit file on the selected storage device and any dot bit files that are not built for the proper rtx7 device will be rejected by the fpga let's talk about the oscillators or the clocks the basis 3 board includes a single 100 megahertz oscillator which is connected to pin w5 now let's discuss about the basic input output the basis 3 board includes 16 slide switches 5 push buttons 16 individual LEDs and 4 digit 7 segment display. The next thing that we have to discuss is the PMOD ports or the PMOD connectors. A major change from the basis 2 board to the basis 3 is the addition of double row PMOD ports. Digilent produces a large collection of PMOD accessory boards that can attach to the expansion ports to add ready made functions such as A2Ds or D2As, analog to digital converters or digital to analog converters, motor drivers, sensors, displays and many other functions. These ports can be used as simple expansion ports since all of the pinouts can correspond to the pins of the FPGA. These PMOD ports can be used as simple expansion ports since all of the pinouts correspond to the pins of the FPGA. Each 12-pin PMOD ports provides two 3.3 volt VCC signals and two ground signals and eight logic signals. The VCC and the ground pins can deliver up to one ampere of current. And the pin assignments for the PMOD input output connected can be seen here in this table, uh, which is in reference to this PMOD pinout configuration. So if you want to understand uh, what are the PMODs here or what are the name for the PMODs or the use of this PMODs. So you can just check this figure here and it will show you all the names of this pinouts. And again, the same can be seen here. And there are PMOD JA, JB, JC and JX ADC. This is our PMOD JA, this is PMOD JX uh, ADC and this is our PMOD JB and this is our PMOD JC. Okay. So these are the four P modes and all the pins are mentioned here, power, ground, and uh, one, two, three, four, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, all of them are there. And here the same thing can be seen here. And each of them are described here in proper manner in this table. And since the P mod pins are connected to the Arctic 7 FPGA pins using 3.3 volt logic standard, Special care should be taken not to drive these pins above or over 3.4 volts. The next is the dual analog, uh, dual analog or digital P mod or the JX ADC, which is our analog to digital converter. The onboard P mod expansion port labeled as JX ADC is wired to the auxiliary analog input pins of the FPGA, depending. Depending on the configuration, this port can be used to input different analog signals to the analog to digital converter inside the Arctic 7 XADC. So any or all pairs in the port can be configured either as analog input or digital input output. And there you have it, a overview of the basis 3 FPGA development board. Whether you are a student, a maker, or a seasoned engineer, this board offers a robust platform to bring your digital designs to life. So I hope this video helped you learn in brief about the Basis 3 board. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.